Uh, it's 104 outside. I'm got my swim trunks on. That's about it. And it's uh, 87 degrees inside with the air conditioner working and the fan blowing to me. So, you know, having a sugar free 7 up on ice. I have my ice maker over here making ice. And by 8 o'clock tonight, it will get down to 100 degrees. Yeah, so, welcome to the desert. It's the last year I'll spend down here. You know, my class reunion is in Southern Cal next year, but it was supposed to be this year, and that's really about the only reason I stayed down here, was to go to that. And it's like, well, you know, if you want to inconvenience me, somebody who travels, uh, I'm not going to stay where it's bad weather, as far as I'm concerned. And nor am I going to stay in California, which is way too expensive. So, um, it's not like the old days, you know? So, next year I'll be traveling. I'm going to go to uh, my father's hometown in Missouri, Savannah, Missouri. Uh, I'll be in, uh, probably in Oklahoma. I'm going to go back up into uh, Idaho and uh, swing over into Oregon. And then I'm going to uh, probably stay at a friend's house for a couple of weeks and get my uh, get my RV parked in storage and just use the car. I found a, uh, yesterday I was shopping online and determined that for about 1500 bucks brand new I could get a tow dolly delivered for my car. So rather than buy a used one here for $1,400, I can get a new one for about $1,500, and I'm going to end up doing that. Um, I was going to say yesterday in a video that I, was, that I did yesterday that I fixed my awning problem. It was flapping like a sail because the extension arm comes down for the... Um, the arm that comes down to make the canopy, you know, in other words, it extends out, you know, uh, bringing the awning with it. But that arm was stuck in one position, one length, and wouldn't do anything. It wouldn't close up for me, it wouldn't extend out and do the job it's supposed to do, so the awning was flapping and I was getting annoyed. I was going to go find somebody to fix it. and. I happen to be going to the Chinaman, which is what we call the hardware store on Main Street. It's a nice guy, very nice guy. And I was getting a uh, tape measure, which I have somewhere here. There it is. I got me a Stanley tape measure, 12 feet. I'm, I cut, as you can see, um, some reflectix for well, at least reflected for the one dining room window, which was kind of annoying, you know. And it really does block a lot of the heat out. And then I'll do, um, I've got another piece cut over here that I can cut into sections. Do the door window and the uh, kitchen window. All right, and then I'll cut some sections to do the three windows in the back that need to be done. And that's pretty much it. I'll need to go out and get something that is actually designed for the windshield. You know, the reflector does not work for that unless you're going to attach it to cardboard, you know, and then it will hold it up, otherwise it won't do it. So, anyway, I went out and I got the tape measure, and then I picked up a uh, sledgehammer, which is called the Persuader. And uh, when I came home, I put down the tape measure and I picked up the sledgehammer, the sledgehammer, picked up the mallet, rubber mallet, and I used it, just tapped it, not hard, just tapped it basically. Uh, I mean, you know, it's not like I'm trying to drive a stake or something. 
and that freed it up. I mean, it did everything. It extended, it contracted, so I put it up to where it belongs, and it's keeping the awning straight and from flapping around. So that's done. Now, I had ordered items from, and I've been getting items from Amazon all year, you know, delivered here. And all of a sudden now, they're saying, you know, like yes, a day before yesterday, supposedly they delivered a couple of shipments and uh, somebody signed for them here. You know what? Nobody signs for anything here. There's only three of us, and it's clear which one is space number 40. It's mine. It's not number uh, 38. Is the next one down. He doesn't sign for anything. I already talked to him last night. And my buddy up here in the house, he, his gate is locked, and as soon as his dog doesn't get out of there, he basically has a big yard for the dog. And uh, a lovely dog, I love it. Um, he didn't sign for anything, so the man, the UPS driver is lying, okay? It's a clear, blatant lie. So I called Amazon, filed the complaint, and got a, getting a credit for those items that were shipped. And then in the process, waiting for the next box, which was supposed to arrive, about 5 o'clock, UPS shows that, oh, well, you know what, that's going to be sent back to the, uh, the vendor. So basically, UPS has been caught. Uh, there has been a report filed. Uh, Amazon is looking at their continuing contract with UPS and considering voiding it for failure to perform because that's what they're doing. When they say that they've delivered something and clearly it wasn't to be signed for, it was not that expensive stuff, like a little keyboard and mouse combo that was like 19 bucks or 13 bucks. Um, there's a scam being pulled, you know, whether it's UPS lying about delivering the product or it's a UPS driver ripping off product from Amazon. One way or the other, it's bad news for uh, UPS and a bad news for Amazon. It's bad news. In fact, I did a, uh, a text to them and said, you know, he can be the first trillion, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Bezos can be the first trillionaire when he actually does something to earn it. Yet. And right now, that is not today. You know, uh, he has built an enterprise not that started off as Amazon was a book sale place, right? I don't know, many of you weren't involved in the internet back in those days. But there were companies like them and book pool that we used to be able to get technical books from and other books. Uh, they had basically in a garage, they had metal shelves, you know, bookshelves, and that's where they kept the inventory of books. And then they advertised them online and they sold them and they shipped them out to you. And that was a really good deal back then. And then they started getting into everything else. Now understand they don't stock anything themselves, all right? You go to Alibaba, which is out of the Orient, you know, and you buy product in bulk, and you have it stored at Amazon, and they charge you $35 a month to store it. So they're not on any money, they're making money. And, uh, what they are is a facilitator. That's all. They facilitate the sale by putting the product on their website. And it could say that it's shipping from there, but it's not being provided by them. And then they do the payment processing and all that, and they ship it out, all right? And uh, they pass on the profit, actually the, the gross profit, uh, minus all the uh, 
minus all the Amazon costs becomes the net profit. So they pass all of that back off to the guy who said, oh, I'm going to buy all this product and risk being able to sell it. That's why you'll see a lot of different product that's from this, from many different people. It's all the same item uh, and they're at different price and different pricing. Um, you can get programs online where they will actually tell you how to do that. Uh, if you, that's what you want to do. I certainly don't want to do it. I'm retired. I'm having a great time. I've thought about doing it, but I have no reason to annoy myself with it. Basically, you could sit at home and check in on the website on Amazon every day and get your inventory of everything that is sold. So you'll know how much money you've got coming in. And I don't know, I think they pay once a month or something. But that's what Jeff Bezos has been building his wealth on, is on the backs of other people. Not on any, he has, has provided no value. Well, unless you want to consider his website a value. And the fact that he'll do the credit card processing through his merchant account. But then he's making way too much money for what value he thinks he's added to anything. And dealing with a company like UPS exclusively has seriously hurt him. But he's playing the old, uh, you know, throw the spaghetti against the wall and whatever sticks. I'll say spaghetti, it's better than the other stuff. Um, he's, he doesn't really care how much happens in the way of problems as long, and how many customers he loses because there's still this big buying trend there ha having to do with COVID-19, the pandemic. He thinks that we can't order and order from uh, Best Buy, from um, Walmart, you know. I mean, the things that I was going to get from him, which I'm probably never going to see, I can go to Walmart and actually have them have it ready for me so I can pick it up in Parker. I can go down to uh, Yuma and pick up product at Best Buy. Uh, that's 85 miles away, but it's still, I'll do it if it's an emergency. Um, or I can order on eBay and have it sent out to me via the UPS, the USPS, you know, the mail system. I'd prefer not to do mail, but whatever. So, yeah, this started off as a, uh, this is the temperature type of video, and uh, it's gotten into, uh, it's basically a major, major session I have going on with Amazon right now. And it's not going to get any better for them in dealing with me because I used to do a lot of this stuff, including the internet, e-commerce. You know, I mean, for a living. So you can't tell me how it's normal to do. No, it's not normal. I know what's not normal. I know what is normal. Normal is the reliable UPS driver who's not desperate for money comes to my unit, drops off the boxes, wraps one time on the door and goes. All right, that's reliable. What is going on now is a total, absolute ripoff on the part of the UPS driver with UPS doing nothing about it whatsoever. So if somebody is shipping UPS in the future, I'm not buying. You know, I won't buy. I'll insist on USPS or FedEx. I love FedEx. You know, FedEx is a great company. Um, they usually can get something to you within a day or two. And UPS takes forever. I'm going to go now. It's almost 15 minutes. Time's up. So I'm going to go back to the pool. No, I don't have a pool. I've closed off the bedroom so I don't air condition that back there because unless I'm going to take a nap I don't want to be back there. I just need the front section of the home. You know, it is a home. 
So up to uh, the dining area and kitchen sink. I like to get that cool. And I'm right here with the fan blowing toward me. The air conditioner's over here. So as the cold air is coming off the air conditioner, it's blowing right into my face here. So I'm comfortable. I'm going to go. Bye, everybody.